Welcome back to Community Conversations. I'm your host, Steve Mantis, and my guest today is Rick Atkinson, a paralegal with Kinawea Legal Clinic. We were just talking about uh, retirement pensions and, and benefits. Uh, we want to get into some of the other benefits even before retirement, but the other question, how do you apply for these pensions? Now, I, I know myself, something mm -hmm. arrived in the mail a couple of weeks ago saying, geez, you know, in nine months you're going to be 65, here's some paperwork for Canada Pension. Mm -hmm. And another envelope the same day that was for, I guess, the old age security. Right. They didn't, I can't, no, nothing came in terms of the, yeah. what was the third benefit we called it? The guaranteed income supplement. It, okay. Yep. So no, they, that's, something, that's something different. Yeah. They, they have um, uh, instituted a, a program of automatic entitlement to the old age security, and that should come out after your 64th birthday. Okay. Read the letter. If it says that you're going to be automatically entitled to it and that it's going to be processed, then fine, you don't have to do anything more. But if it doesn't say that, then you should apply. It used to be that you had to actually make an application. So read the letter and, and see if it says that. If it, if it does, okay. If it doesn't, go in and apply okay. and go into a Service Canada office. And the guaranteed income supplement, the main thing about that is that you have to have done your income tax return. And like, that's, like in the last year or something? That's right. Cause it's or based, every year? It's based on last year's income. Around July, they fix it for the next year, how much you're going to get per month based on last year's income. So they review it every year. That's right. Based on your income tax And if you return. ever don't file your income tax return, it'll stop. And you won't oh, know why. Oh, my goodness. That is so, that's such an important information. It is. And income tax returns, there are so many things now tied to them. It's absolutely vital that everybody does their income tax return. Even if you have no income and you're paying no taxes, make sure you file your income tax return. There's all kinds of other things that are connected to it government benefits, whether, whether it's, you know, the guaranteed income supplement or the HST or GST supplement or, or other government programs. Make sure your income tax return is filed. Well, I'm if sure you glad you're on that. the show because I'm <laughs> learning lots today. Oh, good. So uh, we don't have too much time left, but, mm -hmm. but let's explore a little bit about for people who, who haven't been uh, able to really be included in our labor market. I mean, there's there's structural unemployment in mm -hmm. our community. And there's know, disability. And there's disability. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of people that really don't participate. Mm -hmm. what, what's available for them in terms of support from, from the government, from our society? Okay. Well, as we, as we said, if you're in the province of Ontario, you would be looking at the two programs, Ontario Works or Ontario Disability. And if somebody's a single person on Ontario Works, their check is made up of two parts one called the basic amount and the other called shelter. And that's how much you pay in rent. And if you don't pay the maximum, you don't get the maximum. But the maximum for the basic amount is $250 a month. That's for food. The maximum for shelter is $376 a month. That's for rent. So, so a single person, the maximum they can get is 326, did you say? 376. The Three. total of them is 626. How, 376 for an apartment? For rent, yeah. Where, where, where can you find that? Well, that's a challenge, isn't it? <laughs> it's, I mean, there are, there are people who are able to um, get rent geared to income through Thunder Bay Housing. Okay. But if, if you're not one of those fortunate people and you're on the waiting list, which is years long, then uh, you're out in the, in the market trying to find an apartment for $376 a month. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So it's not a lot. People aren't... Uh, no, and, and, and what you end up doing, if you, if you are lucky enough to find some place to rent for $400, that takes money away from your food. Right. So you don't have as much money for food, and you end up using food banks and, and eating in soup kitchens and things like that. Mm -hmm. So $250 a month on top of your rent, yep. that's less than $10 a day for everything. That's for everything. So food. if you take a yep. bus across town, yep. you only have 3 or $4 left for food for the day. Yep. That's right. Sounds pretty tough. Well, what yeah. about if you had a, a disability? Then you would be eligible for the Ontario Disability Support Program, the ODSP. And the, the, the values there are higher. So that's why um, people who are on Ontario Works, if they have disabilities, we try to get them onto Ontario Disability. It's a little more um, close to what you would get, to what 
you need to survive. And uh, the basic rates there for a single person, basic um, amount is $607, a lot more than 250 But the rent is only 479 so it's not um, really enough to cover rent, so you probably would be using money out of your food money. Mm -hmm. But it's more likely that you'll be able to survive. The amount that a single person on disability would get from the province of Ontario is about $1,086 a month. Total. Yep. yep. You know, I'm not renting myself, but my son mm -hmm. and his girlfriend are renting an apartment. It's $1,100 a month. Yeah. Uh, yeah and so even if they split it, yep. you know, but well, if a you're couple, single, I don't know how yep. that works exactly, but... If, if there are, there are two people, a, a disabled person with a spouse, the maximum they would get would be $1,646. So in your case, they, if they had to pay rent of $1,100, they'd have $500 left. Great. For everything else. Yeah. And, I mean, I know personally, if you've got a disability, you have extra expenses. Oh, sure. And, There's and all there, kinds of things that you yeah. have to now pay for yeah. that maybe other people yeah. don't. And there's other things other than food, like clothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah you, can't, you can't get away without spending some money on that. Isn't that a luxury, that clothing? <laughs> not in Thunder Bay. <laughs> <laughs> you, either, you either got winter coat or you're, or you're not going to get by. Jeez, it feels like, you know, I, I get confused, Rick. I, mm -hmm. I have to tell you. Because I talk to people, all different kind of people in Thunder Bay and, and, and um, in my work in Toronto. And they're friendly, mostly, and they're generous, mm -hmm. and they want to help each other. You know, you express you got you, you have a need. Generally, that's how I find Canadians. Yeah. But our institutions, our public institutions, don't seem to reflect those values. You know, I mean, I don't think it's fair that, that a person has to live on $600 a month. Yeah. You know, I mean, if they're having a hard time, can't we do better than that? Like, what's going on here? What... From all your years of experience, how do you how does this all match up? Well, I, I think that's kind of a philosophical question, but um, um, we, for one thing, we haven't walked a mile in those shoes. People don't know what it's like to try to live on that kind of money, yeah. or to have the kind of barriers to employment that that the people who are existing on on those benefits have. And um, I think, as as a species, I think we t like to blame the victim. Yeah, I like I, if if. If that is something that could happen to you, then that's a frightening thought. Yeah. So we like to think that it's kind of their fault that they're there and that it can't happen to, to us, but it sure can. We're all a paycheck away from it. And I'd like to explore the philosophical part some more, but we're running right out of time. Rick, thank you so much for coming oh. on the show today. Well, we've just scratched the surface. I know. Can, will <laughs> you come back? Certainly, sure. Anytime. Oh, well, that'll be totally great because I've got more questions and, uh, mm -hmm. and, you're, and I'm sure for our audience too, they're gaining a lot. Uh, we'll, we'll post uh, contact information for okay. uh, Kinaway Legal Clinic on the website, I mean on the, on the TV. We are developing a website uh, on uh, Facebook and uh, we, that should be up soon. Uh, next week, uh, guest, uh, our guest will be Bruce Heyer, who's our Member of Parliament for Thunder Bay Superior North. Feedback is welcome anytime. If you enjoy the show, let us know. If you have suggestions or, or thoughts on that, you can send emails to me at smantis at tbaytel.net. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you, Steve.